afternoon. I have several announcements to make. I regret to announce that Associate Justice Frankfurter has retired from regular active service on the Supreme Court. He has served on the court for 23 years, and for many years before that, had an illustrious career as a lawyer and a teacher. During his service on the court, the direction of the law has been channeled by many important decisions, which he has rendered. He has always been a vital force in directing those decisions. Few judges have made a significant and lasting impression upon the law. Few persons have made so important a contribution to our legal traditions and literature. Now, regard for his health has compelled him to take a less active part in the court's labors, and we shall miss him. To the vacancy created by Justice Frankfurter's retirement, I intend to appoint Secretary Goldberg. Secretary Goldberg will bring to the court a wealth of experience gained from the active practice of law for over 30 years. He has had an enviable record of accomplishment at the bar, and his character, temperament, and ability superbly qualify him for service on the court. I believe that his scholarly approach to the law, combined with his deep understanding of our economic and political systems, will make him a valuable member of the Supreme Court. His place as an advisor and as head of the Department of Labor will be difficult to fill, but I am confident that he will find an equally wide opportunity for public service in his new position. In Geneva this morning, the Soviet representative proposed that agreement should be reached on a cutoff time for all nuclear weapon tests, and that this date should be set as of January 1st, 1963. I'm happy to say that the United States government regards this as a reasonable target date, and would like to join with all interested parties in a maximum effort to conclude effective agreements which can enter force on next uh, New Year's Day. To accomplish this purpose, the governments involved must accelerate their negotiations, looking towards an agreed treaty. For our part in the United States, such an agreed treaty must be presented to the Senate for consent to ratification. We therefore have no time to lose. The world will welcome an agreement that a way should be found to stop all nuclear testing at the end of this year. But I must point out again that in order to end, to, end to end testing, we must have workable international agreements. Gentlemen's agreements and moratoria do not provide the type of guarantees that are necessary. They do not give assurance against an abrupt renewal of testing by unilateral action. This is the lesson of the Soviet government's tragic decision to renew testing just a year ago. Nor can such informal arrangements give any assurance against secret underground testing. That is why we must have a definite agreement with reasonable and adequate assurance. The United States cannot be a party to any renewal of false hopes which the Soviet government shattered last September. The two treaties now before the Geneva Conference have been prepared with care to meet the technical necessities of an effective test ban. If the Soviet government will accept a serious and formal agreement in either form, a real downward turn in the arms race is possible. The United States government, for its part, will spare no effort to this end. And finally, I am very happy to announce that, express great pleasure that the Scholar Cantorum of the University of Arkansas won first prize for a 40-voice choral group at the Guido Rezio International Polyphonic Group contest in Italy. This is the first time this contest has ever been won by an American group. They were sent by private citizens. The prize of 300,000 lira was presented by President Senyi, Prime Minister Fenfani, and uh, we are inviting them to the White House, the Rose Garden at 12 noon, September 4th, and we're very proud of them. How do you feel about the prospects of the National Farmers Organization holding meat and grain off the market until processors promise to pay higher prices? Do you think, for example, that farmers have the same rights as an industrial union to strike and thus deprive consumers of their products? Well, there's no evidence that they're planning to do, deprive consumers of their products. What they would like to do is get a higher price for their products. And it is a fact, of course, that farm income is low. Last year, it was $2 billion above the figure of 1960. It was the highest it had been in nine years. But farmers are very, particularly those who live on small farms, uh, work very hard day and are paid uh, very 
relatively low wage. This kind of an effort has been tried in the 20s and the 30s and other occasions. It has not been successful because there are so many farmers and uh, they are so separated that it's not been possible to have them uh, together uh, present uh, a bargaining position. And it is because of that that the federal government uh, has entered into the matter. So I could not speculate on what uh, their success will be. Mr. President, uh, we were told the other day that Wilkes Thrasher of Chattanooga had been in to see you uh, and that you were inclined to support his candidacy for Congress from Tennessee. <coughs> Uh, today we had an announcement that he is uh, on the uh, American delegation that's going down to uh, observe or help Trinidad celebrate its independence. I was wondering if this uh, constitutes your idea of support or whether you have any plans perhaps uh, to uh, do a little uh, political or non-political campaigning in the South. No, uh, this is not uh, constitute uh, the action uh, which I would uh, hope to take to support uh, his candidacy, uh, this visit uh, this weekend. This is a non-political trip of his. Uh, as far as coming to Tennessee, I have no plans as yet. Uh, in fact, I haven't worked out my schedule for any state, but I support his candidacy. Yeah. The United States has been urging uh, a four-power consultations in order to reduce tensions in Berlin. Uh, in this connection, there, is, there have been reports of a foreign minister's meeting uh, in advance of the General Assembly, and uh, also there has been speculation that you may personally meet with Mr. Khrushchev at the UN. Would you give us your views on this? Please? Yes, on the first matter, there will be a meeting of the foreign ministers uh, before the meeting of the General Assembly. Uh, it's been agreed to in principle. The time and uh, location has not uh, been set. On the second matter, I think I responded uh, last week uh, to the question of Mr. Khrushchev's coming. Uh, we have no information. I have nothing really to add to what I said uh, last week on this matter. Some time ago, you spoke about the problem of dealing with preparations of nuclear tests, which can be carried on in a secret society to our disadvantage, as you pointed out. Uh, can you tell us what has happened to this problem in these current negotiations? Uh, the, uh, we have indicated that if we could get a, an across-the-board agreement, uh, uh, which would include uh, a cessation of atmospheric tests and underground tests with adequate inspection for the underground tests that uh, we would feel that our security would be advanced and we would uh, accept that. On the que if there is only an atmospheric uh, test ban which does not require inspection, of course, then uh, other underground tests uh, uh, would, be, would continue. Quite obviously, the first agreement is the most desirable one. If we can't get that because of the Soviet Union got the Soviet Union's reluctance to permit us to have an effective inspection system, then we would like to get the second, because that would have an effect on the arms race, and it would also have an effect, of course, on the uh, problem of radiation. In uh, that case, of course, uh, the underground testing uh, would be uh, permitted, and uh, we believe that that would give us uh, sufficient assurance against the kind of event which happened last September. President. Mr. President, a recent last decision order. of the Supreme Court said that the Postmaster General does not have the authority to keep pornographic material out of the United States mails except in a limited way, and the most dreadful stuff is coming into our homes and into the hands of our children brought by the United States mails. Now, have you or will you talk with the Attorney General and the Postmaster General as to how this can be remedied? Well, the statutes on the uh, distribution of pornographic uh, literature are well, I'm sure, are known. Uh, the, uh, there's always been a problem, of course, of what is uh, pornography and what is not, and the courts have uh, made judgments in regard to several well-known uh, books recently, and uh, which uh, some people regard as pornographic and others regard as uh, great literature. I would not uh, make the judgment today. I think it is a problem not only uh, in the mails but on the magazines. And it's a matter of concern for parents. I don't think that uh, the post office can be expected to do anything but carry out the laws, nor can the attorney general. And the laws, uh, and, uh, which are interpreted by the court, uh, are quite clear. President. Uh, Mr. President, in connection with Berlin, there have been reports that uh, the Soviets are interested in holding a four-power meeting, that is, a meeting of the four occupying powers in Berlin, to discuss the Berlin situation. Have you seen any indications of this? No, I don't, I'm not uh, familiar with any proposal by the Soviet Union to discuss 
Uh, perhaps you'd repeat uh, exactly what it is. Uh... There have been indications, or there have been reports that the Soviets are interested in... No, I have seen nothing about that. We have nothing... Uh, I've seen no recent proposal by the Soviet Union that there should be a four-power conference in uh, Berlin to discuss uh, the future of Berlin. We have had no indication the Soviet Union has made that proposal. President. Mr. President, uh, sir, your brother is campaigning for the Senate on a slogan that he can do more for the state of Massachusetts. Does this imply that if he were elected, he would have more advantages as a senator than other members of the Senate? No, it, I think that what he assumes is, as a matter of fact, I believe that uh, the slogan is uh, very similar to the one that uh, I used in 1952, and uh, we worked very hard for Massachusetts. I think he thinks that he can work very hard for Massachusetts, and. Uh, do more for it than the other candidates. I don't read any more into it than that, and uh, I'm sure other candidates feel that they can do more. Only the people of Massachusetts, fortunately, can uh, make the judgment, not uh, the uh, Republican press. Right, Mr. Kent, <laughs> not you. <laughs> Mr. President, the uh, decision of the House leaders to put off consideration of, the, uh, of your foreign aid bill until September 19 is being interpreted as a sign that it is weak and in some danger of losing. Is this your attitude? And I know it uh, in, uh, has it in the committee, but uh, that has happened uh, before. Uh, the, there are two uh, primaries next week, uh, and uh, then there is so that, uh, and we have the problem of the uh, UN bond, so it's difficult. It's really a scheduling matter, not a question of attempting to delay it coming up. I would say that I can imagine nothing more short-sighted than to cut uh, the heart out of this program, as uh, some uh, people wish to do. I was looking at some figures today which show that the Soviet Union had given in economic and military assistance to one country, Indonesia, over $300 million in the last uh, 12 months. They are giving, as we all know, substantial military and economic assistance to Cuba, as well as many other countries. Now here, these countries, particularly those in Latin America, which are, have many economic, serious economic problems, those countries of Africa, which are newly emerging, those countries along the Soviet Union's border, beginning with Greece, Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, India, Thailand, and the others, uh, South Vietnam, many of them are hard-pressed, South Korea, the Republic of China. They uh, depend upon uh, uh, the United States uh, to assist them in maintaining their freedom. Now, we have an appropriation of $50 billion for national defense and a large appropriation for defense, an appropriation for the Atomic Energy Commission. It seems to me to be the height of folly to appropriate these large sums of money for our military uh, organization and let these very vital countries uh, pass into the uh, communist bloc. And uh, I think to uh, those, I find it very ironical that those who make the strongest speeches against the communist movements are the ones who want to cut this program the hardest, which is the most valuable weapon immediately that we have on the front lines against the communist advance. And this is a position which I have held, which President Eisenhower holds, and President Truman before them. And I can assure any member of the Congress or any citizen sitting here, this is a very vital program. And I would hope that it would be approached from a bipartisan point of view as it has in the past. This is completely removed from the Democratic-Republican dialogue. We would not have been successful last year without help of Republican members in the House and Senate. And I'm sure that a good many of them are going to help again because this is in the vital interest of the United States. Yes. Uh, Mr. President, could we make quite sure of the import of your remarks on inspection against preparation? Because in a uh, news conference last February, you said this would be necessary for uh, even a ban on atmosphere tests. Uh, were you saying just now that we do not believe that this kind of inspection against preparation is necessary? What I am suggesting is, if the test agreement uh, covered only the atmosphere, that there would be under such an agreement uh, possible quite obviously, a continuation of tests uh, underground, and there would be other steps which we could take under those conditions which would keep uh, our preparations if there was a sudden breach of the kind we had last year, which would keep our prep preparations uh, uh, in a position to protect our interest. Uh, yes. Uh, was it uh, when you called on Mr. Justice Frank Butter about uh, two weeks ago at his home that he Maybe. informed you of his intention no. to retire, and, and could you also uh, shed some light on when you decided to appoint uh, Secretary Goldberg to Yes, I received a letter from uh, the Justice. Uh, he did not discuss it with me, nor did I with him. Uh, I uh, received a letter from him yesterday, and I wrote him last night, and I uh, will release both of those letters uh, uh, right after this news conference. In and I've decided, uh, 
after I received the justice letter that I would appoint to Secretary Goldberg last night and discussed it with him on that occasion. President, Senator Capehart of Indiana, in a speech the other day, said that the communists are sending troops into Cuba, not technicians, as you told us last week. And Capehart, according to the UPI, also called for a United States invasion of Cuba to stop the flow of uh, troops and supplies. Would you comment, sir? We have no evidence of troops. And uh, I must say that uh, I know that this matter is a great concern to uh, Americans and many others. The United States has obligations all around the world, including uh, West Berlin and other areas, which are very sensitive. And therefore, uh, I think that in considering what appropriate action we should take, we have to consider the totality of our obligations and also uh, the uh, uh, responsibilities which we bear in so many uh, different parts of the world. In response to your specific question, uh, we uh, do not have information that uh, troops have come into Cuba, number one. Number two, uh, the main thrust, of course, is uh, uh, assistance because of the mismanagement of the Cuban economy, which has brought widespread dissatisfaction economic slowdown, agricultural uh, failures, which have been uh, so typical of the communist regimes in uh, so many parts of the world. So that uh, I think the situation was critical enough that uh, they needed to be bolstered up. However, uh, we are continuing to watch uh, what happens in uh, Cuba with the closest attention, and uh, we'll uh, respond to, uh, be glad to announce uh, any new information if it should come uh, immediately. Mr. Yeah. Answer my question, uh, what I uh, Capehart's suggestion that we invade Cuba. Yes, was I, that no, an answer? I didn't. I'm not. Uh, Sir? For, I'm not for invading Cuba at this time. Mr. President. <laughs> no, I don't uh, have any. The words uh, do not have some secondary meaning. I think it would be a mistake to invade Cuba. Mr. President, the uh, Soviets, as you well know, because are I think it would lead to uh, that. It should be very uh, an action like that, which can be very casually suggested, could lead to very serious consequences for many people. President, the Soviets, as you well know, are continuing to use armored cars to transport their military personnel into West Berlin. Some persons on the scene have expressed the view that unless we object to this, it will uh, give the Soviets additional rights in West Berlin, which they have not had in the past, and correspondingly reduce our rights in West Berlin. What could you tell us? No, I don't hold that view at all. I don't agree with that. It doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't have that effect at all. Uh, Prince Sihanouk of Cambodia has proposed that uh, the 14 nations involved in the last conference be reconvened in order to guarantee Cambodia's neutrality. How feasible is such a proposal? Well, we're examining his uh, proposal, and we've uh, had conversations uh, with uh, officials of that government. We, of course, strongly support uh, Cambodian independence, neutrality, and the sanctity of its borders. And uh, we would, uh, of course, be glad to take any step which would advance uh, the maintenance of those rights to which uh, Cambodia as a sovereign power is entitled. So we are attempting to uh, consider what uh, step will most usefully advance the objectives which uh, Prince Sihanouk wrote us about. The question of the conference and whether this would advance is a matter which is being considered, but uh, the, his interests, uh, as expressed in the letter, are our interests and, in my opinion, should be the interests of other free nations. Yes. I wonder if uh, a distinction uh, could be made uh, with respect to the troops in Cuba. Some of us were told at the State Department the other day that there is Russian military personnel in Cuba, that these are military technicians and other people who are probably going to operate uh, missiles similar to the Nike missile. Is this an accord? Well, I can't. I don't know who co told you that at the uh, State Department. They're going to operate Nike missiles because that information we do not have at this time. There certainly are technicians there. There may be uh, military technicians. We don't have uh, complete information about what's going on in Cuba, but in the sense the troops, the word troops are generally used, they've had military advisory mission there for a long period of time. So there may be additional military advisory personnel there or technicians, but in the question of, of troops, as, I, as it's generally understood, uh, we do not have evidence that there are Russian troops there. There is an expanded advisory and, and technical mission. That's correct. Are there no, uh Anti-aircraft missiles shipped into Cuba? We have no information as yet. That doesn't mean that they haven't been, but all, all I'm saying is we have no such information as yet. Mr. President, William C. Parker, head of the Arms Control.
Control and Disarmament Agency has said that even if an East-West nuclear test ban treaty with adequate safeguards were negotiated, there's no assurance it will not be violated. In view of this and the rising levels of fallout, would there be that much of a risk in signing a treaty to ban all tests in the atmosphere, in the air, outer space, and water, and undertaking then a voluntary moratorium on underground testing? Yes, there would be a great risk because we've been through the moratorium route. I would hope we could sign the atmospheric test, which does not require inspection. The underground tests do require inspection to determine if there has been cheating. We went that road before for three years, and we found while we were negotiating that the Soviet Union had been preparing for many months to test, so we couldn't accept that again. Yes. This morning, newspapers carry reports out of Moscow to the effect that the traffic from the Soviet Union to Cuba has increased so substantially that they're using ships from NATO countries to deliver some of these goods. Is this a matter you think the United States should take up with the NATO countries? Yes, definitely, definitely. And I think that those who are associated with us would uh, consider this matter very carefully and consider what uh, steps they could take uh, to discourage it. We have uh, you know, not asked our NATO partners we have been in consultation with them about the matter. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, sir, I wonder if you've had time this last week to figure out some means whereby we might uh, insist that the if we give money to the UN by bonds, uh, buying bonds uh, through contingency funds, if there's some way that we could make them guarantee that the money we give them would not be used in military action against uh, Katanga and also be used by troops that commit atrocities. Well, I thought we went over this uh, road uh, last week, uh, but uh, I'm glad to go over it again. You said that you had not immediately uh, agreed with the part about atrocities, and I thought maybe this last week you might have had time to reconsider. <laughs> yes, I have thought about it. <laughs> and uh, I would, uh, I would uh, say that, uh, that uh, I just uh, like to, I know that uh, interest of some in Katanga, which I've always found to be uh, interesting, uh, the, uh, but uh, I will say that the uh, situation in the Congo is very critical. And uh, it's not only the matter of the Congo, but all, uh, of Katanga, but also the situation in the rest of the Congo, which is, uh, has no funds except those that have been supplied by uh, the United Nations and by the United States in very limited amount of trade. And uh, if uh, we are unsuccessful, or if the Congolese are unsuccessful in bringing about a union on a satisfactory basis between the Katanga and the Congo, the remaining of the Congo, you are liable to find a very uh, critical situation in the rest of the Congo, which would be very dangerous to uh, the free world. So I would hope that those who have enlisted on one side or another would consider the general interest of a united Congo in a uh, peaceful non-communist Africa, which I believe very much at issue. Now, in regard to the UN bonds, I strongly support it, and I think that it, the cause of uh, the United States as well as the free will would be advanced if the bonds were passed and the United Nations kept going. I don't want to see the United Nations go bankrupt and all of its peacekeeping machinery uh, go into uh, the ash can. Mr. President, okay. sir, would you tell us what the Monroe Doctrine means to you today in the light of world conditions and in Cuba? The Monroe Doctrine means uh, what it has meant uh, since the uh, President Monroe and uh, John Quincy Adams uh, enunciated, and that is that uh, we would uh, oppose the, uh, a foreign uh, power extending its uh, power to, to the uh, Western Hemisphere. And that's why we oppose what is, being, is happening in uh, Cuba today. That's why we have cut off our trade. That's why we've worked uh, in the OAS and uh, in other ways to uh, isolate uh, the communist uh, menace in Cuba. That's why we will continue to uh, uh, give uh, a good deal of our effort and attention to it. Uh, on the question of uh, nuclear tests, can you explain how the security of the United States can be adequately protected by an agreement on our part four months hence uh, to sign a test treaty, ban treaty, while the Soviet Union is in the middle of a, an extensive series of tests? Does this mean that you have determined that in this series they cannot catch up or overtake us? We do not uh, believe that they could make uh, sufficient progress in uh, this series of tests to adversely affect our security, number one. And number two, if we do not get an agreement, and uh, I would say the uh, chances are not, uh, I'm not sanguine about the chances of an agreement. If we do not get an agreement, the danger to the United States will be greatly increased 
as more and more countries develop an atomic capacity and present us uh, with an increasing danger as the decade goes on. So uh, in answer to your question, I believe that the quicker we can get a test agreement, the better off we will be. One say that you would make a determination at the end of any Russian series as to whether there would be a need for another American series? Yes, I, and I've tried to respond that in our judgment, we would be, our security would be assisted by an effective agreement if we could secure it by January 1st or by any other date, because I consider the uh, constant uh, development of uh, new and uh, more dangerous weapons by not only the United States and the Soviet Union, but by other powers, and particularly the very strong possibility that proliferation will mark uh, this decade if we don't get an agreement as a matter of maximum peril to the United States as well as the free world. And therefore, if we can get an agreement, it's in our interest and in our security. Those who oppose an agreement should consider what our security will look like at the end of this decade if we do not have the agreement and we have the possibility of 10 or 15 countries having these weapons. And uh, when one goes off, it may mean they all go off. So this administration will leave no stone unturned to get an agreement if we can get it and provide for our security on the basis which I enunciated in my original statement. Uh, Mr. President, uh, a memorandum from the FCC has uh, been reported sent to the White House relating to censorship of international telecasting and broadcasting. Do you uh, care to comment upon your attitude yeah, towards such no. censorship? I haven't seen that, uh, such a memorandum. What is your attitude towards Well, I'd like to proposal. see the memorandum, and then I could give you a much more uh, responsive answer. There appears to be growing concern among scientists as to the possibility of dangerous long-range side effects from the widespread use of DDT and other pesticides. Have you considered asking the Department of Agriculture or the Public Health Service to take a closer look at this? Yes, I, I, and I know that they uh, already are. I think particularly, of course, uh, since Ms. Carson's book, but uh, they are examining the matter. Uh, the day after you left California last week, the uh, proposed debate between our governor and uh, Mr. Nixon blew sky high. And it's been suggested since and published speculation that uh, you advised our governor to avoid this kind of confrontation as the uh, reigning champion in this field. I wondered if you would like to tell us what, uh, whether or not you did discuss this with Governor Brown. And also, if maybe the time has come when you would tell us what you uh, once suggested you would have advised Mr. Nixon. <laughs> no, well, I'll say that uh, we, I never did discuss the format with uh, Governor Brown. I understand that Governor Brown is uh, suggesting the format uh, which uh, was used in the 60 campaign, which was used the other night in Boston, and which I think is very satisfactory, but they have to work out those details. Now, uh, I think that the best, uh, in answer to your last, I'll be glad to uh, tell you uh, in November. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President. Sir, would you explain how an agreement to be signed only by the currently existing nuclear powers would prevent the arisal of other nuclear powers? Quite yeah. obviously, if it did, uh, if other powers uh, went ahead with testing, of course, uh, then the agreement would uh, cease to have uh, very much effectiveness. It is our hope, it is our hope that the uh, signing by the major nuclear powers today will arrest this spread and not uh, make it essential. But it is a, only a hope. Thank you.